Okay. Now with this one, I've given you uh, indirect quotes as well as a direct quote because I wanted to talk to you about indirect quotes because they're something that's very common in research, right? So what is an indirect quote? All right. Well, let's look at the article down here at the bottom where I've got these, All right? So here, Herman has cited from Caven D. Hall, 2019, and then she cited from Suvin, 1972. And let's say that I really want to incorporate these ideas from these two other authors, right? As well as information that Herman has said. But how would I let my reader know that this isn't all from Herman, right? I need to let my reader know that these are citations from Cave and D. Hall and Suvin, right? Now, ideally then, I can go to the Works Cited page and I can find Cave and D. Hall and actually go to their source and just cite them directly. So this is something you can do called resource mining, right? When you find an article that really works for you, look at their reference or works cited page and see, can I find any of these other sources? Will any of these other sources be helpful to me, right? So I found this article, but unfortunately, I can only get access to the abstract unless I want to pay for it. So what am I going to do? Well, I can use indirect citation and still use this quote. So this is what I've got right here. So I've identified Cave and D. Hall, and I've quoted them, right? But in parentheses, I've got QTD in, and then I've listed Herman and the page where she has quoted from them, right? And then over here where Suvin is, I've again quoted, I've given the lead in for Suvin, and then I've got quoted in Herman in the page range where the Suvin quotation from. So this lets my reader know that I am using Suvin and Kevin D. Hall's words, but I'm going through Herman and citing them through her article, right? And then lastly here, I've actually then cited something from Herman, right? And that's just by using the page number and using Herman's name here, that lets you know that these are her words, right? So that's what indirect citation is, and that's how you get around, you know, if you're actually quoting from a quote that the author uses themselves, right? That's how you do it, right? So here is the summary then, where I don't actually quote directly. I just actually just summarize that she looks at different positions and then she decides that science fiction should not be limited to only AI that reflects actual current technology because that's just not what science fiction does, right? And so because I've not alluded specifically to Cave and De Hall and Suvin in this summary, only other than just say she considered different positions, um, then I just have to put 327. And again, I've got Herman there, so I don't have to repeat her name there, right? Okay, now we're going to do a web article from the internet. Web articles can be difficult because there's oftentimes a lot of stuff here at the top. And so like, what is the name of the article? Is it high culture? You know, so high culture is just the section that this particular article is categorized into. So we're not gonna use that at all, right? This is the name of the, this is the title of the article. Big Think is the title of the magazine. Here's our author's name. Our date is right up here, kind of hidden. You gotta look around. And then sometimes you have to look all the way down at the bottom but here's trademarks owned by, so Freethink Media is the sponsor, all right? And so that's gonna help us then get this as our uh, works cited entry, right? Brinkhoff, comma, Tim. There's our source title in quotation marks, our container title in italics, our sponsor, our date, and then our URL. Notice we don't have an access date. We only have an accessed on date if we do not have a publication date. All right. And so now we're going to do, so I've got another quotation that also includes a summary. So if we look here at the beginning, you can see uh, what I'm quoting from. So he says, Repositions of artificial intelligence in literature predate its real word invention. See Christopher Strachey's 1951 Checkers Draughts program by nearly a century. So notice here, though, I took out that 
Christopher Strachey, that's what the dot, dot, dot means. I just took out that thing in parentheses because it wasn't necessary, right? And then I summarized this whole little section down, all of this right here, where he just basically mentions and then gives a little quick summary of what it is in these three novels that the authors are talking about with the AI. I just really wanted to, to mention the three books. So I just summarized those uh, briefly, all right? So the, the summary then, that, that's just pure summary. Oh, and then of course here, then Brinkhoff. Now though I said Brinkhoff up here, remember it's a web article, so I don't have page numbers, so I'm gonna end in parenthetical, parenthetical with the author's name again, so my reader knows where I end. And then my summary, Brinkhoff begins by pointing out the 19th century novels by Samuel Butler, George Eliot, and Mary Shelley all provide warnings against AI long before it was invented by almost 100 years. So notice how that pretty much summarizes exactly what this is, but in a very different way than what it actually is. It doesn't repeat much. I mean, I can't change the author's names. Obviously, I'm not going to do that, but I use them in different ways. I didn't just restate it exactly as is, right? I Instead of saying, you know, the dates of the novels, I just said 19th century novels because they all happen to be in the 19th century. Instead of sending by nearly a century, I said by almost 100 years. So notice that, again, I'm saying the same thing, but in a very different way. And then I've got my brink off at the end so they know where that citation ends. Okay. Last thing that you might use is the internet video. So I'm going to show you just the basic. If you've got more information, you can Google and find out. You know, Purdue has a good... Um, list of how to do YouTube, but this is just your basic uh, information, right? So if I don't have a specific person, like if I knew the narrator here or something, right, you know, I don't, I just have the title of the video, so that's what I'm going to lead off in quotation marks, right? So I've got the True Story of Troy Ancient War full documentary. So whatever it says up here, that's what I'm going to include in quotation marks. Then period, then I'm going to put YouTube in italics or whatever, you know, if it's, you know, one of the other places out there that has videos, that's what I'm going to put. Then I'm going to put the name of the group. So right here, whatever this place is right here, this is who I'm going to put right now. I can come down here and put about and see, is there anybody else responsible for it, right? You might, there might be a name. So again, we want to come here and see if there any more information. There isn't. It's just Sterling Documentaries. Okay. It is the most legendary war in... Then I'm going to put the date that it was uploaded. Now that can sometimes be a little bit tricky to find. So it says just seven years ago. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit show more and then you'll see the actual date. Okay, and then I'm going to give you the YouTube address, and then I'm going to put a period. All right, now here, this is a little bit more tricky because I'm going to actually have to be trans, if I'm going to be using an actual quote, I'm going to need to transcribe these word for word unless a transcription is available. Places like here that provide transcripts that you don't have to worry about listening and typing. This one didn't do that, so you have to listen and type and listen and type. So this is the quote, right? Um, so there is no lead into it. I could have a lead in if I needed to. Um, if you have something that has no author, you can see there is no author here. All I need to do is a shortened form of the title, right? So I'm just going to use the first three words, and then I'm going to do a timestamp, and I do a six-digit timestamp: hour, minute, and second, right? So zero one one five two six dash zero one one five five two right that's the the timestamp for this quote and then i've got a summary of the quote or more of a paraphrase right and it's got the very same timestamp. but notice i don't have the true story in there because i mentioned the title right here in leading into the summary right so again i'm handling it just the same the only difference is instead of a page number i'm using a timestamp. All right, and then here is my Works Cited page. So you can see all of these works that I've mentioned. I actually put them all on the Works Cited because, of course, you're not going to have the Works Cited in the paper. I just put that here just to show you that so you could see, right? 
but in the document you're just going to have that in-text citation and then people come here to see it. So notice it's alphabetized by whatever the first word is here. Now notice if you have a title that uh, begins your entry because you don't have an author name, then you ignore A, N, or the, and, you, uh, uh, and you'll alphabetize it by the second word. So we're going to alphabetize it by true, not the, because A, N, and the are so common that you just have everything under or A, N, or the if you didn't, right? So we ignore A, N, or the. But everything else is, again, alphabetized properly. It is hanging in dent. Notice that there is no extra spacing. Everything is just double spaced. You have the works cited title. This is what it should look like, right? Now you only have, you don't, you don't have this many perhaps uh, entries on your works cited page, but again, this just shows you a wide, wide variety um, of what it should be. Okay, well, I hope that helps. Uh, again, remember that there is a two-step process to fully documenting your works, and if you have if you've missed either of those, then you have plagiarism, and that is a very serious problem, and you don't want that um, because that can cost you a grade, um, and that can really hurt your your overall grade. So, uh, just be diligent, be thorough, take your time, look at the book, look at the handouts. Don't do this by memory. Rely on the sources because that's what they're for. They're for. Good luck.